The procedure begins with the placer inserting the feeding tube into the patient's nose, as can be seen by the nasal hair. The tube then progresses down the back of the patient's throat, heading towards the larynx. We visualize some rapid movement, which is the patient swallowing to assist with feeding tube placement. The placer then progresses down to around the 30 centimeter mark, where we will pause to ensure that we have moved into the esophagus and the top of the GI tract. The esophagus is a long, hollow, muscular tube collapsed in nature, as can be seen here on the screen. You will be looking for the tissue of the esophagus to contract around the tip of the feeding tube. You can utilize the insufflation bulb to add air and create space to ensure you are in the esophagus, as can be seen here. Once we have determined that we are in the esophagus, we will continue to progress down to around the 50 centimeter mark. We will be looking for the cavernous structure of the stomach and those large irregular rugal folds. The tissue of the stomach differs from that of the esophagus, which can be easily visualized by the smooth tissue and the presence of gastric pits, which resemble freckling. The placer may continue to progress the tube down to the 70-75 centimeter mark, looking to migrate the tube into the small bowel. In order to visualize the larger view of the stomach, you can retract the tube away from the lining of the stomach, or add air utilizing the insufflation device. This will allow you to visualize the large, regular rugal folds, as well as the dark, cavernous nature of the stomach. When viewing the large, cavernous nature of the stomach, if there is any moisture or mucus collecting on the end of the feeding tube, continue to progress the tube up against the tissue of the stomach, which will help to resolve any visualization issues. Internal anatomy varies in every patient. With this patient, the placer makes multiple attempts at entering into the small bowel, as can be seen by progression and then retraction back towards the top of the stomach. For a desired postpyloric placement, the placer may continue to progress the tube down to the 70-75 centimeter mark, 
where they may see rapid movement and changes in the tissue. As the tube progresses into the small bowel, due to the speed of placement, the pylorus may not be visualized. In this patient, we're able to visualize the pylorus open and close as the tube progresses through it. After visualizing rapid movement around the 70-75 centimeter mark, we're looking for changes in the tissue to determine that we've progressed into the small bowel. The tissue of the small bowel is covered with finger-like projections called villi that will move around the feeding tube in a wave-like fashion. In this procedure, the placer retracts the tube from the small bowel into the stomach, as can be seen by the tissue change. As the placer progresses the tube back towards the small bowel, you will again visualize the pylorus. Once you've progressed the tube to the desired depth, you may end the procedure. Prior to initiation of enteral feeding, confirm placement of the feeding tube per facility protocol.